I hope you enjoyed your long weekend in the sunshine. Although the sun seems to be disappeared a bit more now after the rain yesterday. So um, what we're doing today is some fractions for starters. And then we're going to go on to, and work on solving equations. Um, so I'll tell you a bit more about that when we get our starters out of the way. So remember, first one, when we are adding fractions, what we can do is if we just leave the whole numbers as they are, because we're adding two mixed numbers together, so there's a whole number and a fractional element to them. And then we need to make a common denominator for these numbers. If you remember, we're looking for the smallest number that 3 goes into and 4 goes into. So that will be 12. And then we've multiplied the 4 by 3 to get 12. So we need to do the same with the 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, and I'll just point at this rather than scribbling all over it. So the 3 has been multiplied by 4 to give us 12. So the 2 needs to be multiplied by 4 as well. So that's going to give us 8. So if we do the whole numbers first, we've got 1 add 6 is 7. And then we've got 3 twelfths add 8 twelfths. So that gives us 11 twelfths altogether. Okay, so that's that one finished. The next one. 10 and a third take away 3 and 5, 6. We're going to do that in exactly the same as, way as the one that we've just done. So we're going to keep the 10 and we're going to keep the 3 and we're going to find equivalent fractions for these. Okay, so looking at the denominators, we've got 3 and 6. So the smallest um, number that 3 goes into and 6 goes into is actually 6. So we'll change these to 6. So we've doubled the 3 to get 6, multiplied it by 2. So we need to do the same to the top as well. So then we've got the 6 here. We haven't done anything to the 6. So we don't need to do anything to the 5. Okay, so all together here, look at the whole numbers. We've got 10 take away 3 is 7. And then we've got 2 6 take away 5 6. That takes us negative 3 6, doesn't it? Okay. So if you've got seven whole ones and you take away 3 6, you're going to still have six whole ones. Okay. And you'll still have 3 6 left, but 3 6, remember, will simplify. So the answer is 6 and a half. Okay. If you'd wanted to, you could have changed that to a half at that point. 7 take away a half is 6 and a half. Okay. And then the last one, look at that big long multiplication. So what we're going to do here is we are not, well, I'll tell you what we're not going to do. And that is we're not going to do 1 times 3 times 4 times 2 times 5 and put the answer on the top. And then do 3 times 8 times 5 times 7 times 14 and put the answer on the bottom. Because that takes far too long and I don't want to do that. It's too complicated. So let's do our cancelling where we can cancel anything on the top with anything on the bottom. Okay, so have a look at those numbers on the top. Look at the numbers on the bottom and see which ones match up or at least are in the same times table. So we can see here we've got a 3 on the top, a 3 on the bottom. So let's cancel those 3s. Can we see any other numbers matching on the top and the bottom? We'll look at the 5s. One there and one there. Now, we can see we've got... Now, it, you've got a choice of where you go from here, really. Um, we've got an 8 there and a 4 there. So they'll cancel because they're both in the 4 times table. So we've got 1 there and two fours there. And now, if we look again... We've got a 2 here and we've got a 2 here. So they will cancel. So this bit here has been cancelled twice, but that's okay. And then look what we've got on the top there. We've got 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. So nothing else is going to simplify there. And all we need to work out on the bottom is 1 times 1 times 1. Well, that's all easy enough. That's just 1. And then 7 times 14. So 
I would like you to think about 7 times 14. I don't want you going 14 times 7 and doing a chimney sum and working it out. So let's let's not go there, okay? Let's think, well, remember 14 is 2 times 7, isn't it? So if we do 7 times 7 and double it, so 7 7s are 49. So 49 twice will give us 98. So the answer is 1 over 98. But if we had done 14 times 7, we'd have got 98 for that. Okay, so that's our starters out of the way. And what we're going to go on to looking at for the next few days is going back over solving equations. Now, those of you that were with me um, before the Easter holidays, you, when I was doing my kitchen videos, you might have done some solving equations there. We've certainly done solving equations in class. All of you will have done solving equations at some point. So if you want to kind of skip through this first bit because you're confident with solving equations, that's totally okay with me. As long as you can do the assignment that I set you at the end of it. Okay, so let's have a look then. First of all, we're going right back to basics. Okay, what is an equation? Okay, well, an equation is a set of mathematical um, items with an equals. Okay, so for example, it might be 2t add 7 is 15. Okay, or it might be 8 equals 5t squared plus 3t minus 9. Okay, these are all or both equations because they are expressions made up of terms and there's an equals. Okay, so to start with, if you're going to solve an equation, you need to check you've got an equation, so you need the equals. Okay, so let's think, what do we mean by solve an equation? Okay, look at the equations that we've got here. So to solve an equation, basically what we're doing is finding out the value of the letter so that your equation is true. Okay, so putting it simply, it's find the value of the letter. Okay, the letter could also be called the unknown, find the value of the unknown, or it could be called the variable. Okay, they're both a bit more mathsy words for letter. Okay. So the most important thing is that when we're solving equations, we do it in steps, okay? But both sides must be equal every time you've got an equal sign, okay? Regardless of what you've done to your equation, if you don't have both sides equal, then you're telling fibs if you put an equal sign in between, okay? So it's very important that you keep both sides equal every time you put an equal sign. So an equation is a bit like a balancing scale where we've got things on both sides and the things are equal to each other. They Both sides have to weigh the same for this balancing scale to stay flat. OK, so the point at which everything balances around is the equal sign. OK, so here we've got I've written down here. We must keep the contents of the baskets equal. So. Before we get on to just simply using algebra to solve equations, I want you to understand why we do what we do with equations. So what we're going to think about is this first equation that we've got here in set A. Number one, x plus four equals ten. So that means that what's in this basket is x plus four and what's in that basket is ten. OK, so x is an unknown amount. OK, so we have got an unknown amount of something and four and that's equal to 10. Okay, so if we're trying to find out what that unknown amount is, if we just want x on its own, and then we can see what it weighs the same as, we're going to have to get rid of this plus 4. Okay, so if we take 4 out of that basket, this doesn't balance anymore unless we take 4 out of that basket as well. Okay, and if we take 4 out of both baskets, it's still going to balance, and what that tells us is that x is equal to 6, 
because that's what's in the baskets now. Okay. I'll show you how to write this down as algebra in a minute. Let's look at the next one. We've got t add 9 is equal to 13. So I know that you can work out what t is without even hardly working anything out. But the process is important because look at the other ones we've got to do for questions 3, 4 and 5. They're not quite so easy just to work out, are they? So what we need to do is get t on its own. So... We need to take 9 out of this basket because we've got 9 too many. We've got T, but we've got plus 9. So let's get rid of those 9. Let's take 9 away. But if we take 9 out of that basket, we've got to take 9 out of this basket as well to keep it weighing the same. So that must be 4. So we can see here that T weighs the same as 4 or T equals 4. Okay, and I want to show you now how to write that down for the first two when we're using algebra, okay? So I know you've come across this sort of thing before, so we're not going to dwell on it too much with the simple ones. So when we've got x add 4 equals 10, I want us to be able to write down algebraically what we were doing with the baskets. So what we decided to do was subtract 4 to get x on its own there. There were four too many in that left-hand basket, so we had to take four out. But because we had to take four out of that basket, we've got to take four out of the basket on the right-hand side as well, otherwise it won't balance anymore. Okay, so we've got just x left in this basket, and we've got six left in that basket. So that is the answer, x equals six. We did the same with the t, so t plus nine equals 13, and we took away nine from both baskets. So that left us just with t in the left-hand basket and four in the right-hand basket. So you see what I mean that I said a little bit earlier, that every time you write down a line with an equals in it, you've got to make sure that the left-hand side of the equation does equal the right-hand side, otherwise you're telling fibs. Okay? So we're going to go on to this next one now. Um, t plus 9, e sorry, uh, v add 1.9 equals 7.3. And that is not one that we can just look at and know what the answer is. So we're going to go through the same process as we've been doing with the last two, where on the left-hand side, so in our left-hand basket here, we've got v and we've got 1.9, but we, that's extra, it's plus 1.9, we don't want that. So we're going to get rid of the 1.9. And because we've done it to that side, the baskets don't weigh the same anymore unless we do it to the other side as well. So on the left-hand side, we've got rid of the 1.9, so we've only got V in our basket there. But on the right-hand side, we've got 7.3 take away 1.9. So the, re the way I would do take away 1.9 in my head is take away two whole ones and then add 0 0.1 back in. So that would take us down to 5.3, so it would be 5.4. And that would be our answer. Okay. And we're going to do this next one. Actually, I'm going to leave number four. We'll do number five instead. K add eight equals three. And we've got eight too many. So we're going to have to take eight away. So the eight's disappeared now out of the left-hand basket. We've only got K left. And three... Take away 8, be very careful, that is negative 5, okay? So it's okay for solutions to equations to be fractions, to be negative numbers, to be decimals, as we saw in the last one, okay? So we're going to do one more type just now, and then tomorrow we'll go on to the different ones. So now what we've got is x minus 6 in this basket and 15 in that basket. So how are we going to undo that? How are we going to get x on its own? So what this is basically on the left hand side here is it was x but 6 have been taken out. So if we want to restore this back to being x again we're going to have to add 6 back in to get rid of this fact that we've taken 6 out. So we need to add 6 into the other side as well and that's going to give us x equals 21. So let's write that down algebraically. 
So we started off with x minus 6 equals 15. We'd had to do the opposite of minus 6 to restore this back to x on the left-hand side. So we're adding 6. So now we have got a full bag of x on the left-hand side. And we've got 15 add 6 is 21 on the right-hand side. Okay, so if you've got a minus, the thing that you do to both sides is add it. And the ones that we just did, where you've got a plus to start with, you subtract that from both sides. So you do the opposite of what you've got. Like I say, I know this is revision, um, but if you have ever struggled with solving equations, it might be... Not that you can't do the difficult equations, it might just be something has not quite clicked with the more simple ones and we need to kind of build that back up again. So that's why I'm starting from the beginning with it. Okay, so the next one, we're going to go straight to the algebra here. So C minus 3 equals negative 1. So we know that to get rid of this minus 3 and restore it back to being C, we have to do the opposite of what we've got. And notice when we say what we're doing to both sides, there is not an equals in the middle here. Okay, these are instructions. That's why I've put them in brackets. Okay, so on the left hand side, we've restored to our full bag of C and then negative one add three is two. Okay, and you can always check equations. Equations are great because there's kind of a built in checking mechanism for those because if you take your answer and substitute it back for the letter in the question, um, it has to make sense. OK, so if we swapped the C for 2, because that's what we've said t C is worth, is it true that 2 take away 3 is negative 1? And it is. So we know that C equals 2 was the correct answer. OK, we're just going to do, um, we'll do number four. We don't need to do all of these. If you want to do them all, that's brilliant if you need the practice. But I'll be issuing practice questions anyway. So we'll do the last one. So W minus 3.04 equals 5.99. OK, so we don't have a full bag of W because 3.04 is missing out of it. OK, it could be, if we think about it in real terms, it could be that my wallet has lost £3.04 out of it and now there's £5.99 in the wallet. How much was there in the wallet beforehand? OK, so we're going to have to add that £3.04 back in so we can work out how much was in the wallet. So £5.99 add £3 is £8.99. Add four pence is nine pounds and three pence. But of course, this question is not about pounds because there's no pound signs. It's just handy when we see two decimal places. It helps us bring it back to something that we understand if we can relate it to money. OK, so that's how come a lot of the time um, when we're talking about fractions, I talk about pizzas or chocolate bars. And with decimals, it's often helpful to talk about money because they're things that you deal with in real life and you can actually imagine those. OK, so I know this has been really straightforward today for most of you. So if you just look at the practice questions, make sure you can do them. And then tomorrow we're going to go on to some more tricky um, solving equations. It's, it's not going to get too too tricky too quick. I'm going to take it slowly. OK, see you later.